we're about to go into the Creation Museum. Before we did, there's these walkways are on the outside. When you see these mists, do you think it's just for ambience or for, you know, um, some kind of decoration, kind of interesting to look at? But really what it's demonstrating is how the earth was watered before the flood. Understand that there was no rain for 1,600 years, and this is how the earth's vegetation was watered prior to the flood. A mist came up and watered the earth. Okay, so now we're off to the museum. And over here we have little Cain and Abel. and a couple of dinosaurs in their presence. It's beautiful, wide, wide, wide screen. It is perfectly suited for life. Doing an introduction full of such wonder and beauty. to the museum. You have a column here comparing naturalistic evolution and biblical creation. Many of these things you would want to spend some time with. I'm going to breeze through a few so that you can get an overview and then we'll, we'll stop and we'll take a look at some of the displays. So yeah, um, some feel that Australopithecus or Lucy is actually a, just a, a good sized chimpanzee and nothing more and not the precursor to us, so to speak. Life's biggest questions, is there any hope? And they have them side by side, naturalistic evolutionary worldview versus a biblical creationist worldview, and there is a difference. And they are literally life-changing. It happened to me in the Navy way back when, when I was 23 years old. So there's a lot of things to stop and read. You're going to need at least a full day, if not two days, if you're going to read, do a lot of reading. <laughs> but there's plenty of things visually to look at as well, too. So it goes through the chronology of the different biblical figures. There's Daniel, archaeological record of Daniel. Jesus, questions that people may have that you may be able to find answers for here. And I think this is interesting here, the most unique book in the world. It's talking about the Bible. You've got 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 in the New, and I think this is really important. The Bible is a collection of 66 books written over 1,500 years by approximately 40 different authors using multiple genres from three continents and three languages while maintaining one consistent message. Interesting. And for those of you who won't be able to get to the museum, this video is for you. Now we're talking about problems in society. All right, here we go. We got some animals. What kind of animals do we have? So this is an, a depiction or an idea of what creation may have looked like before the flood. There's my wife, Kristen. Say hi, Kristen. And the Lord God brought every beast of the field and every bird of the air to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, 
That was the name thereof. I'm not going to show you everything, just so that there'll be some surprises when you get here. Now, the one thing that I would have done just a little bit differently here, if this was up to me and it's not, but they've done a fantastic job, don't get me wrong, is that Adam and Eve would have had a covering of light in their pre-fall state, meaning like the angels, they had a robe of light that would have, quote-unquote, hid their, their nakedness. And what they did for Eve, even though we're not going to be able to... Let me see if I can get a close-up of her face. What they did for Eve is they collectively took all the different races of individual women and they did a... Um, composite for her you know and they're a little bit brown because a lot of people on our channel have been asking you know or, or stating emphatically Adam wasn't white he was this he was that you know the bottom line is we don't know but his name does mean ruddy or red earth so maybe that gives us a clue also too um, I would have made these uh, two figurines slightly larger I believe that humans before the flood were Huge, like the dinosaurs, like the plants and animals prior to and even shortly after the flood. <clears throat> this must be the honeymoon. Now understand that Adam was created from the earth. Eve was created from a rib taken from Adam's side. He was anesthetized and then a rib was taken out and it was Jesus himself who did the creation. So he fashioned the woman from the rib and then on that Friday night, they spent the time together, getting to know one another, and that was their honeymoon. As a result, and this is what they're making the point, as a result of that one misstep, one sin, 6,000 years of this. And in the midst of this, like there are thorns on a stem of a rose, you still have a rose. <laughs> a beautiful smelling and beautiful to look at rose. So it isn't all bad, but a lot of bad has been done. Here's Adam and Eve, and they were given coats of skin which means that lambs, in this case, had to die in order to show just exactly how terrible sin is. Imagine seeing the first death and being responsible for that death. And so their robes of light were removed and they were given robes of skins. And again, um, here this is depicted that there's death, you know, in the animal world as well. Things changed after the fall. Things changed. It was very easy, <laughs> effortless, in order to eke out a living, so to speak, before the fall. After the fall, Adam and Eve went from being, and the family, ended up being, uh, went from fruitarians. Adam and Eve were fruitarians, which means they just ate nothing more than fruits, grains, and nuts, and seeds. And they became vegetarians, vegans. And the reason is, is that they had to till the ground, which means he was expending energy that needed the nutrients from the other types of food stuff. And so vegetables were added to that diet. Methuselah was the oldest man that ever lived at 969 years old. He is Noah's grandfather. And he knew Adam which means that Noah's grandfather had many years with Adam. Imagine getting your information like that secondhand. And so here is the ark being constructed, and there are those who are mocking and not believing that it could possibly rain. We saw earlier how the earth was was wetted down or 
was uh, moisturized with mist that came out of the ground. There's Noah up there, I guess. 120 years, some would argue it was 75 years that it took to build the ark. Regardless, it was a long period of time. And one of the uh, criticisms we get on our channel is like, why would God destroy babies and, and, you know, isn't he vicious? Well, they were vicious. And had they not done something, then everybody, including Noah and his family, either would have been killed or they would have been swayed to being vicious as well too. And everybody would have been in a state of violence and nothing but doggy dog and they would have ended up just wiping out the human race themselves. That's the idea, but think about this. He was merciful in the sense that he warned the world for, for 120 years and everyone had the opportunity to come on board the ark if they wanted to. So here we have a model of the ark. And again, I'm going to go through a little bit fast here. You're going to want to hang out and just kind of look at these things. Depiction of the ark. And again, the, the best eyewitnesses that uh, have seen Noah's ark, George Agopian in 1904 and 1906, and Ed Davis in 1943, look it up on our channel. We have videos on these gentlemen. Uh, saw it differently. They did not see a, a fan uh, or a sail, I should say, if you want to call it there, or any kind of rudder over here. It was basically a box with slight curvature on the edges, but the ridge going down the middle is accurate here. But they have done a fantastic job here at the Creation Museum and at the Ark Encounter. And here is Noah's answer. So if you want to go over here and ask a question, how did you gather all the animals? What? Oh. You think that I had to find and gather all of these animals? <laughs> God was the one who brought them to me. It was an amazing sight to behold. God told me to take seven of every kind of clean land. Animal, Thank you, Noah. <laughs> two of every kind of animal, So there's cages. Places to store food. And then after the flood, it rested on Mount Ararat, which is a volcano. That's right. That was formed by lava. And there's some geological evidence that it was formed underwater. I guess pillow lava is one uh, indication that it was formed underwater and came up. So as the water came down, and the, the mountain came up, and it's, it's 16,000, almost 900 feet tall. Then Noah's Ark was able to rest in a valley with little peaks around it, apparently, where we understand it to be today. At the 15,500-foot level on the north northeast side of Ararat. Now, this is where all the fossils are formed during the worldwide flood. The geological conditions were such that it created the fossilization conditions. And that's the reason why we see fossilization, colification, and there you go. There's more here for you to study. And again, if you don't agree with this position, that's okay because you're going to be able to come here and get a different perspective. And that's the important thing. Just get educated on what the other side says scientifically. And then you can compare and contrast. Then you can ask the question as intelligently as one can, which is true, <laughs> which is true, which makes more sense. And that's only fair in any kind of discussion or argument. The flood recedes. This is good. I didn't even see this. I, this is my second time here. I wanted to come back and show you the canyons and the lakes that were created. Now, not all the lakes were created by the, the flood. Some were created by 
after the flood, when the earth was still soft, you know, and hadn't completely hardened yet, there were um, lakes that were uh, formed with the water that didn't escape certain areas. And then when they did, then massive amounts of water would be able to be released. And so erosion took place after that as well, too. And so you see there's erosion that could take place after, even after the flood on a large scale, not global. Then, the, then there was Babel. After the flood, after the flood, I think here the Native Americans are being represented here. Or that was the European Cro-Magnon and, and uh, Neanderthal. Okay, so you had civilizations that started to rise and one major civilization was Babylon. Tower of Babel, I should say. And that's where the languages were confused and the disbursement took place and then everybody went all over the world. Okay, so this section right here is just talking about Jesus talking about his life and what his purpose here on earth was, his eventual death on the cross. And again, there's, there's a lot to read here. This is, this is like a textbook in museum format. All right, we're going to go ahead and conclude our tour here at the bookstore. And I want to thank you for joining us today in the Creation Museum here in Kentucky. Okay, so this concludes our tour. There are other sections that we're not gonna to go to, but I want you to be surprised and see some things you are not seeing in this video. Plan on spending about two days here because there's a lot to take in, a lot to read. And thank you for watching. You guys have a great day.